Hello, we are glad to welcome you once again to our channel and on our series on basic mechanics. Kindly subscribe, like, share, leave your comment and suggestions at the comment section also. Today, we are still on our series on engineering mechanics, and we are looking at resultant of forces in 3D. From our series, we had solved examples on using distances, using angles, and using coordinates of a point. Today, we are going to look at one other area where you need to resolve the angles in order to be able to get the force. Let's look at our question and how we are going to solve our question. Find the resultant of the forces in the figure below if F1 is 540 newtons. So we have been given this diagram here. We have two forces, F1 and F2, and we are asked to find the resultant. How are we going to go about this? Solution. We can see from the question that this kind of question is a 3D question because we have three axes. We have our X, we have our Y, and then we also have our Z axis. So we are in three dimensional space and we have our force F1 and force F2, and we are asked to find the resultant. Let's look at how to go about this question. Good. First of all, we are going to get our forces in the vector form. And we know that in the vector form, forces in the vector form or forces in the component form is always equal to the scalar form of the force is lambda, where lambda is the direction cosine, is the direction cosine. And lambda can be obtained from angles, distances, and forces, and forces. Let's pick F1 and see how to get our force in the vector form or in the component form. Therefore, we can write that for F1, F1 in the vector form or in the component form will be equal to the scalar form of F1, lambda. We need to get our lambda first, which is our direction cosine. And the direction cosine is given by in this case, we are looking at F1, and looking at F1, we can see that the starting point of force F1 is point O, and then the end point is point K, as indicated here. And we can see that the point O, which is the starting point, is the origin, and then K is where it is ending. Therefore, our lambda is equal to, will be equal to our vector OK, over the magnitude of vector OK, the magnitude of vector OK. And from there, we can write, we can write vector OK as equal to, since O is the origin, it means that everything there will be zero for X, zero for Y, and zero for K. Therefore, our vector will be equal to four meter I, plus five meter G minus four K. Then we need to get the magnitude of this, which will be OK 
the magnitude should be equal to square root of four square plus five square minus four square. And from there, we can see that the magnitude of LK will be equal to 7.55. Once you have been able to determine the magnitude and the vector, we can be able to get our direction cosine lambda. From here, lambda will be equal to OK, which we have here, the whole of this over our magnitude, which is here. Therefore, we are going to get 4i plus 5j minus 4k all over 7.55. And from here, lambda will be equal to 0.53i plus 0.66j minus 0.5. 53k. We know that our scalar for F1 is equal to 540. Therefore, F1 in the vector form will now be equal to 540 into bracket 0.53i plus 0.66j minus 0.53k. And from there, our F1 in the component for vector form will be equal to 286.2i, which is the S component, plus 356.4j minus 286.2k. We are done finding the vector component for F1. Now let's look at for F2 for F2, for F2, good. This is force F2. Now we can see that for force F2, we can only get the direction cosine using angles. Looking at the way F2 has been given, F2 is making an angle of 30 with the line here, and it is also this line here is also making an angle of 40 with the Z axis. How do we resolve this? Now, to be able to resolve this force, what we need to do, we can represent our line here, this line here. We can represent this line here as F of H. Because you can see that that line is not in the X direction, it is not in the Y direction, and it is not in the Z direction. Therefore, let's refer to that as f of h. And you can see that what is here, what is here is in the y-axis. We are just looking at this side of the diagram. We are looking at this side of the diagram. So the force is starting from here, and it is ending at that point. We want to resolve this force. It means that, first of all, we are going to move this direction for f of h, and then we move up like this before we can get to the end point of the force. Now we can see that this side is vertical. So this side is the Y component of the force. We are going to resolve this force into F of H and F of Y using the angle 30. Now, using the angle 30, you can see that the angle 30 is facing this side. It is facing this side. It is opposite to this side. And anytime, the side is opposite to the angle, we use sine. Therefore, we can say that f of y will be equal to the force. We are giving the magnitude of the force there at 300. Therefore, f of y will be equal to 300 sine, the angle, which is 30. And from there, our f of y will be equal to 150 newtons. And then we can also resolve f of h. We can see that f of h is adjacent to the angle. And if f of h is adjacent to the angle, then we are going to use cos. Uh, f of h will therefore be equal to 300 cos 30. 300 cos 30. Now take note of this f of h. We can see that we want to resolve the force into X component, Y component, and Z component. 
Here is the case, this f of h is not in any of the three axes. It's not in the x. We cannot attribute it to the y, and we cannot also attribute it to the z. Therefore, we need to again resolve this f of h here. We need to resolve this f of h. So that now, if you resolve this f of h, we are going to get one component here, which is in the x axis. And then we are going to get another component here, which is now in the z axis. So this side will be f axis, f of x. And then this side is going to be our f of z. But this is the starting point of f of h. And then this is the end point of f of h. Therefore, you can see that if you want to resolve that force, if you want to resolve that force, the reason why for this f of y we are getting it to be positive is because we are moving up. We are moving up the y axis. And we said that and anytime you are moving, anytime you are moving on up on the y axis, look at the direction, this up will be positive. Now looking at f of z, Looking at f of z, which is at this side, f of z, we are moving in the positive side of our z axis. Therefore, f of z is going to be positive. It is going to be positive. From here, you can see that we are going to move this direction. If we are moving from this point to the point here, we are moving this direction, which you are seeing that it is on the positive side of z. At this point, you are going to move this direction which now our x going this way is positive. And we are moving this direction. And if we are moving this direction, this is the opposite direction of our positive x. Therefore, our f of s is going to be negative. Now, this angle 40 is facing our f of x. It's opposite to our f of x. And if it is opposite to our f of x, then it's going to be sine. Therefore, we can say that f of s will be equal to fh, which we are resolving, fh. And then we said that it is facing the angle. Therefore, we have sine 40, negative. We said that it's going to be negative. Don't forget that. And then let's resolve to z. z, we said that it's going to be positive. But the z side is adjacent to the angle 40 here. It's adjacent to the angle 40. Therefore, it's going to be f of h cos 40. We have already seen that f of h is 300 cos theta. When we come anywhere we see f of h, we are going to substitute f of h with 300 cos theta. And here also, we are going to substitute f of h with 300 cos theta. And therefore, our f of x will be equal to f of h, negative f of h, this is negative 300 cos 30 sine 40, sine 40. And then our, that is going to give us 300 cos 30, Time 40 is going to give us negative 167 newtons. We also get for f of z. Now f of z is f of h. And we are saying that we are substituting for f of h. That is going to give us 300 cos 30. And then already we have our cos 40 there. Therefore, cos 40. And from there, our f of z is going to be. 199.0. And from here, we have gotten F2 also in the vector form. F2 in the vector form is going to be the S component, which is in this case, we have negative 167i. And then we have the Y component, which is 150 plus 150j. And then we have the Z component, which is 199 plus 199j. We have f also in the vector form. From there, we can get our resultant. Our resultant R is always equal to the vector sum of F1 plus F2. And from there, we can say that our R will be equal to the sum all the high components, and then you also sum all the 
Y component and the K component. The I components, you have 356.2 minus this one for F2, which is 167 I. Then we can get for the J components. The J components, you have negative. The J components, you have 356, 356. 356.4 and the J component here, which is plus 150J plus the Z component. We have 199 plus negative 286, which is here, negative 286.2K. And from there, our resultant to be equal to 119.2. Two for I plus 506.4 J minus 87.2 K. And we are done finding the resultant of our faults. That was quite easy, isn't it? However, if you have any challenge or any comment or any suggestion on what you have just done, you can let us know at the comment session and we will greatly appreciate your feedback. Once again, we want to thank you very much for making time with us and joining us on our platform to dive more into engineering mechanics. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and also hit the notification button so that anytime we upload a video, you can be able to get in touch with us. Bye-bye for now. See you in our next video.